So we go forward uh, with the next talk, and that will be capsulotomy fixed, fixated swival laptex IOL by Dr. Shri Ganesh. Thank you, uh, Dr. Bhakti. That is uh, the innovation uh, from Shri Ganesh. He's, uh, he's got many innovations to his uh, credit, and this is one of the fantastic one. Thank you, Dr. Bharti. Good afternoon, dear friends. And uh, I would like to talk about IULs for fem femtosecond uh, uh, lens surgery. And uh, I have an uh, innovation, uh, which is a swivel haptic toric IUL for as a capsulotomy fixated lens. Uh, you heard Dr. Maipal talk about flax, but uh, once you do the flax, then you can have lenses for flax which are capsulotomy fixated. That is the biggest advantage of doing flax. So the, which is the best place to in, uh, insert the lens? I mean, where do you want to place the lens after removing the cataract? Is it in the antechamber? Is it in the posterior? Um, in the bag or is it uh, at the level of the anterior capsule? So the common pitfalls of present day IULs which are placed in the capsular bag are that it is very difficult to estimate the effective lens position, so you can have refractive surprises in some cases. Rotational stability for toric IULs can be an issue and you have rotations in the bag, especially if the bag size is bigger. Premium or toric lenses cannot be used if you have complications like a PCR. No, there are no premium lenses for aphakia and uh, even in multifocals you have many step centerings once you put the lens in the bag because it's more posterior and this increases the photic phenomenon. So if you look at existing capsulotomy fixated IUL designs, you have bag in the lens IUL uh, for which you need a perfect 4.8 mm rexis and also posterior capsulotomy and usually used in pediatric uh, cases uh, but again you need a higher degree of skill then you have the masket uh, uh, lens which uh, again needs a perfect 4.8 mm rexis and uh, you have to capture the rexis in the in the groove and uh, it can also lead to capsular blockade so now became very popular and then you have the Femtis IUL, which is probably the uh, commercial IUL available today, and that's the Femti Femtis lens. But again, this is a hydrophilic lens, and then uh, it needs a higher degree of skill. You can also have uh, pupillary capture in the, in the groove with this lens, and then you also uh, can have capsular blockade. It, it is difficult to remove the viscoelastic once you have captured the lens in the uh, capsulotomy and again you need a femto capsulotomy perfect 4.8. So one day I was riding my bike and then um, thinking about capsulotomy fixated IULs. I stopped the bike, put my stand and I had a Eureka moment. Why not have uh, a pair of swivel haptics which swivel over the capsulotomy and capture the uh, capsulotomy and so I designed the lens. Now we have a new and improved uh, toric design. Uh, sorry, let me look at. So if you look at the design of the lens, um, it's a single piece open loop hydrophobic acrylic IUL with uh, two uh, 6 mm uh, aspheric optics, 13 mm overall diameter, two extra swivel haptics of 2.5 mm made from a proprietary material which swivel over a pivot. The A constant is 117.1 because it's placed much more anteriorly. Let us look at some cases. First is a routine uh, uneventful case. This is a toric IUL. You can see that uh, femto has been done with the intelli axis. So you can see the knobs there, which uh, is where you need to place the axis. The, this swivel haptic IUL can be loaded into any cartridge either a butterfly cartridge or a closed cartridge and then injected, you just inject it into the capsular bag like any other lens and then after that you can just swivel the haptic over the capsulotomy so that it captures the capsulotomy and then you can see that it is, you can remove the viscoelastic even from underneath the 
lens, which you cannot do with the other uh, capsulotomy fixated IULs. And since it's anchored to the capsule, you can see it's perfectly on axis. This is one of the cases, post-op refraction you can see is plano. So you get an excellent toric correction. There's no rotation of the lens because it's fixed onto the anterior capsule. Suppose you do not have a perfect capsulotomy. See, this is a case where the patient moved the eye, the suction loss, part, partially there has been a, uh, the laser capsulotomy, but then it is completed with the forceps, and you can see it is not very regular. Even in these cases, even if it's not regular, you can still use this lens. Even in manual capsulotomy, if you don't have a perfect circular capsulotomy, you can still use this lens and place it on axis. This is the UBM showing the anterior position of the uh, lens and uh, the OCT showing the anterior position of the lens. It's just under the iris. So you don't have any negative dysphotopsia. So you don't have the patients co coming in complain of shadows in the temporal area. That's also an advantage. Suppose you have a PC rent, you can still use this lens. You don't need a standby. See, this is a PC rent which has occurred. It's a fairly large PC rent. You can still put this lens in the capsular bag, rotate the swivel haptics to capture the capsulotomy. So you don't need a standby three-piece lens. And this is a toric. So when you have, you don't have three-piece lenses in toric designs. So then you have to use a monofocal and the patient has left with an astigmatism. Here you don't even have to change the lens. You can use the same lens, place it on axis and uh, capture the capsulotomy and it's very stable. So you can see this is the post-op uh, picture. Then what about aphakia? For aphakia also the swivel haptics has holes. So this is a patient with uh, aphakia and you can see that uh, the patient had a high cylinder, needed a toric lens to be placed at 22 degrees uh, axis. So you just mark exactly perpendicular to that. And here uh, we have used a troca cannula also, done a vitrectomy. Then you place the IUL. And then I'm using a 26 gauge needle with a pre-threaded uh, 6O proline, which I pass through the hole in the haptic. And then you can do the four flange technique. You bring it out and then you flange the proline, pull it, and then you can flange the external. The other side again can be flanged. You put in the 26 gauge needle, then flange it, the other haptic, swivel haptic. And then when you pull it, you can see that the lens centers very well. And then you can see that it is on axis here. You can see that marking on the toric lens, which is perfectly aligned to the axis. And then you can do the external flanging so that you have a, a toric IOL which is well placed, correct astigmatism, uh, and is on axis. So this is also a, a case of Marfan syndrome, extreme subluxation. And these are cases, this patient had uh, two and a half diopters of uh, cylinder. And these are cases which are difficult to manage. Here, of course, um, I went in and did a capsular excess. But these are cases you don't want to use an endocapsular ring and then fix the ring with the CTS because over a period of time, after eight years or 10 years, uh, there can be a progressive subluxation. Even if you use Gore-Tex, the other side becomes weak and it can move. So here, uh, basically, I just use a capsular hook, remove the lens material, then I remove the capsular bag. So it is uh, FA kick, and then I use my lens. You can see that the swivel haptic lens and it has to pl be placed at 62 degrees the axis. So perpendicular to that, I put in the pre-threaded uh, proline sutures, pass it through, and then pass it through the hole in the swivel haptics from above below, bring it out through the main wound, flange it. The same thing is done on the other side for the other swivel haptic. The pupil is also coming down, but it doesn't really 
matter as long as you can pass the proline and then flange it and then you just put in the haptic there and flange the do the external flanges and bury the uh, flange subconjunctively and you can have you can see that it's on axis so even in such a case this patient had a uncorrected vision of uh, 6 9 with a good cylinder correction so this is a lens which can be used for different situations you don't need a backup lens so even if you don't have a bag you can use this lens rotational stability is excellent uh, for toric IULs you can either use a manual or femtocapsulotomy better centration less tilt no special instruments or training required to use this lens and relative anterior position and uh, fixed ELP so refractive results are stable no negative dysphotopsia you can use it in complex cases even if a P you have a PC rent or holes in the haptic you can do a scleral fixation for FAK or even uh, ZD and of course in the future we plan to have multifocal designs and in the multifocal design also you will have less rings so less dysphotopsia you can also center the IOL to the visual axis uh, in the cases of large angle alpha where and use it use multifocals even in uh, large angle alpha so that is uh, my innovation uh, you can use monofocal toric multifocal any design on this platform thank you very much for your attention thank you Shri Ganesh uh, for this wonderful uh, talk and demonstration of the new lens it of course does not need uh, the special instruments but I think it needs special skills to use it you just have to rotate the yeah. uh, so, swivel haptic so that is a little bit of a manipulation which you need to do yes uh, with two dialers but I don't think it's too difficult doesn't look like in your hands but I'm sure it is uh, not as easy but, but it's much easier than the other capsulotomy fixated lenses yeah. agree so how soon you are going to launch it in uh, commercial we are just waiting for the commercial approval we have got uh, approval for uh, as an investigational device but once we get uh, like the commercial approval then we start the multicentric trials and then we can send it for CE approval and then commercialization. Sri, so Sri Ganesh sir, what is the length of the spheral? Uh, it's uh, 2.5 millimeters, the so haptic. The haptic, from the haptic, the 6 and then 2.5. So total it will be 8.5 if you measure. About 8 millimeters because it, it's within the haptic, the, within the optic, at the edge of the optic. Yeah, small. So when you are just flanging, so uh, suppose if it is too... Uh, you can get a decentration so you yeah. need to center it and that's why I don't flange immediately yeah. I put the other one also then I center it and then I flange each oh. <laughs> so one question in initial you know earlier times where AC lenses were used say what 30 years back we had Sputnik lenses No, this is fixed to the capsulotomy, so it does not matter whether the pupil dilates or constricts. Oh, you used it as a scleral fixation? Scleral fixation, again, it's fixed to the sclera. No, it's not pupillary fi fixation. The Sputnik lens was uh, pupillary fixated, so you couldn't dilate the pupil. That was done after intracapsular cataract surgery, so it's yes. <laughs> a difference. Thank you.